Hope you've had a, a good day. Thanks for coming in here and hanging out with us a little bit. My name's Chuck Snow. Um, I'm with GeoQ, I guess, slash Microdomes. Um, a little bit of background on myself is I owned a mapping company for 20 years, retired. Somebody called and talked to me about drones, and I know this I'm probably a rude guy, but I, I hung up on him because I said, you've lost your mind. Drones are toys. I had a cheap mapping system, but it cost $800,000 in my, in my airplane, and I said, there's no way that little toy is going to give you accurate data. And he said, he was a guy that I used to rent total stations from to go calibrate my mapping system. And he's a friend, you know, he owned a, a survey instrument company in Birmingham, that's where I'm from. I said, I'll do it, Adam, because, you know, I've known you for, you know, the last 15 years. You've been, you know, letting me get a total station from you and, you know, checking out my system because I had to do a calibration report every year before you could map for somebody. So I spent a lot of months, you know, because I'm a hard-headed guy, because I didn't think it would work. I spent several months looking at this technology and found out that I was really totally wrong about this and how it worked. And now I told my boss, you have to fire me. I'm never retiring. You have to say I'm kind of an old guy because I'm having so much fun with this. And we've, every year we get better data, more accurate data. Every year the sensors are getting better. It's getting easier to use. I actually stayed out of this business, did a lot of photogrammetry, stayed out of this LiDAR business because I'd go look and say, to my boss, they can't do that. Not that I, I didn't either. I had two guys that I had chained to a desk to process LiDAR data because it was so complicated back in my day. If some of you guys are doing photogrammetry or thinking about it, thinking LiDAR's complicated, it's not now with our software. It processes much faster than photogrammetry. It's easier, I've done a lot. Okay, I've done over a thousand missions. Okay, so I've done every kind of sensor that's out there. I've processed data myself on, and I am not a smart guy. Everybody out here is smarter than I am, so. I'm sure you guys could do it, but LiDAR now is easy in our software. Sensors are easier to use, easier to fly, and most of it's automated. I'm gonna tell you about the easy one. Um, again, I've been doing this a lot. Um, I've done microdones for three years. The biggest thing that people tell me about as we polled our customers over the last couple of years is, if you could change anything about the products and the LiDAR, because you know it's big systems, they're heavy, you know, nobody wants to carry them around. Our LiDAR cases you know, for microdones are three by three by two feet, which is crazy. They said, make it smaller. So we listened to people and we, we did make them smaller. This is now the smallest LiDAR thing out there. With everything on it, everything, battery included, it weighs less than 13 pounds. I just flew it last week for 38 minutes on a mission, had plenty of battery left with a LiDAR sensor on it. One of the ones that Madeline showed you a while ago. So this one doesn't have a sensor. I didn't want to sling a sensor around, but. Anyway, the battery goes in the back, it's one battery. It's called the Micronones Easy One. And we have NDAA compliant version. So if you have to have that now, or if you think that you may need that in the future, you're spending what I'll call a relatively decent amount of money. You may get in other areas where you may have to have an ND compliant. We've, we've looked, there's 12 states now. They either have legislation or are gonna have legislation in the future that talks about negatively about DJI drones. I mean, I like them, I fly them all the time, I've flown them a ton, so, but a lot of places won't let you fly those anymore. And I found from talking to a lot of customers that they buy a LiDAR drone, and then they start seeing new revenue streams. Well, I can do this, well, I can do this now, and I can do this, or you can bid on this project now. We did um, 1,800 acres in three days. If y'all are surveyors, don't know who you are, don't know if you're a surveyor or not. In fact, give me hands, who, who does, who's a surveyor out there? Who gets out there in the field and does stuff? Where'd he go? Yeah, okay, well, you know, I know what you're right, used to. So, well, you know, I, what I'm saying is you don't want to. This is so much faster. 1,800 acres in three days is a lot. But y'all know, even if it's a 50-acre project or a 100-acre project, which is what we do all the time, right, it's so much faster. It, you just you can't compare it to a human being. You can't compare it to five. I mean, you know, 1,800 acres in three days, that's, that's, that's 15 guys a year to do something like that. So this technology can make you good money. I have guys that use them to um, do all the work for all the other surveys that don't have them. He ended up buying two of our GeoQ platforms because of that. Small three, three office engineering firm. They added another revenue stream. There's seven other, he's in my state, so I know him well, he's a good friend and a customer. Um, there's seven surveyors in his county and he does all the topo work for them. These things are great in topo, I mean, you know, I know you hadn't used them, but it's so much faster than a human being. Even if you have to fly slower or do a crosshatch, it's still gonna be 80 or 90% faster than human beings doing a topo. And you're gonna get a shutter of 50 feet, we're gonna have one every three inches, so it's a great tool. Some of the prices on this, this is, the, this is not an NEA, this has got the UHR Plus on it. So 
What I want to mention, though, is you see that blue over there? My laser's working. You see that M2X? When they talked about that new sensor, it is the HESI Pandar, but they changed the architecture on that sensor. They talked about the 435 and the 515 sensor, but the 535, same company made it, but it's lighter, the laser's smaller, and it can get through canopy better. So, and lighter by a pound, that is significant. Um, I'll show you that in some of the specs, but you, so you can fly longer. So that sensor is really, it really works out really well. This is the old one, it's 32, it's still 32 beams, lots of, um, lots of beams to the ground, lots of points to the ground, so it'll still do a fine job, all of these will. Same thing, it's the same sensor you saw a while ago with Mallet, it's just on our, it's just on our, uh, our new system. We also have, through micro drones, if you crash or something like that, we have a replacement program. You know, it's fine. I know your insurance will work, but um, we have, believe it or not, we have people that crash every now and then. And it usually takes a while, a month, six weeks I've seen. So it would be nice if, if you know, if in three or four days, you know, you had one sitting there ready to rock and roll because I know some of you guys are busy. You know, we have a lot of customers that say, Chuck, I can't be down. You know, I got, I got 20 jobs out there. I got to get them done. So um, another thing I'd like to say quickly is, um, we have the micro drones, which is one ecosystem in itself. You know, we do the drone, we have a controller, you use an LP3 software. We have a whole gamut of things all the way across the GOQ line. So if you just want software, we have it. If you just need a sensor, we have it. If you need to work in a system that has everything in there, so you, you know, our flight planning, it's, a, it's us. A lot of our customers choose us because they don't want to have two or three different flight planning programs, Leachy or something else. Uh, ground control, and they can just use ours. Ours does some things that some of the others don't, and I'll discuss that in a minute. Um, that just make it easy to fly. So, you see this stuff, I'm not gonna read to you, because I know y'all can read, but I'm just gonna talk about a few of the things in there. It's, it's just small. It's like 20 to 20 inches across, and it doesn't weigh anything. So, and I, when, we, when I flew the other day, we had um, a lot of elevation change. I was on a, a pit type situation. So you got all those shelves and stuff, so the drone's doing this all the time. And I am going to mention this right now, but I'll talk a little bit about it in a minute. We have real-time terrain following. It's processing LiDAR information inside the drone as it flies, and I watched it do that on a dark surface, which scared me because I didn't think it was going to work. Um, you know, LiDAR gets sucked up, and it rained before, which made my life even a little bit more scary. This is dark surface that's gotten wet. Well, what happens is it gets darker, right? So I'm out there saying, oh, my gosh, I'm out here doing this thing. I'm going to fly this thing, and it's going to mess up because of real-time terrain following. And I need it today. Because in pits, you know, there's no good dim for that, right? Because they're changing the surface of everything all the time, every day. So, but it worked fine. Um, 38 minutes it flew, and I was in shock because I'm watching it go down to that point. You know, things working perfect in this stuff. So, not that it will every time, but it works in canopy as well. We've tested it a lot on canopy, and it works fine. I was just worried about because lasers are soaked up by darkness, and it's hard to get stuff out. So, talk a little bit about the systems. This is the new easy one. See, our controller does a lot of things. Um, it's got a real big screen. You can flight plan. In our flight planning, you know, you talk about hard stuff, flight planning. In our software, you can just run your finger around the screen. The parameters are in there. They're all changeable. All our different uh, sensors are in there. But you can just run your finger around there and say, go fly that, and it'll do it. You can say, go, and the drone will do its stuff. You can do automated. If you want to fly it, some you can. You can take it off. You can do an initialization. You initialize the IMU front and backwards to make sure it's okay. If you want to do that, fine. If you don't, the system will fly all of that for you. So that's some of the stuff I did. That's some people like that. This is the NDA conversion. Um, this is the NDA version. We, some of the things we can't put on the NDA version that we can on the other version, the, the FPV camera, and a couple other things. So, but it's a new compliant RC and that kind of stuff. So we talked about this drone last May and everybody wanted the NDA version. We already had one. We've had one for years, by the way. So it was easier for us to make a new NDA version than, than other ones. In fact, I don't think anybody else in the market has an NDA version um, besides us. They might be, but I don't know of them. So y'all can look that up if you want to. This is the two different ones. The one on the left is our normal version. It all comes in a little bitty case. In fact, the case is back there. I might show you all that at the end. The case is tiny too, as well. It's not one of our big cases. It's um, 31 inches by, I think it's 31 by 16 by 16. So you can just throw it in a car, truck in where you want, you know, where you want to put it and carry it around. So it's kind of how it works. The other one works a little bit differently. Um, I'll go over some of the specs as we move forward. I'll talk to you a little bit about it. This one also had three cameras. All the ones on the left side, it's a single camera, single camera system, 26 megapixel. The one on the right hand side, the new one, the NDA version, is going to have three cameras, 320 megapixel cameras. So it's a new, it's a new Alster sensor, 128 channel, lots and lots and lots of data to the ground. Lot. Remember the HESI panel had 32. 
This has got 128 channels. It's really slinging a lot of data out there. So anyway, so you should get really, really good uh, uh, penetration canopy, other things like that. So we clean all that stuff up. So get rid of noise and stuff in LP360. That's kind of how that works. This is what it looks like, the new NDA compliant version. You see it. It's a little different sensor, but it's just like our other ones. All of them, some of the things we do, those little bitty um, round circles you see there, I wish it was in color so you could see them. We usually have them red and black. You're seeing, if you're an old user of GOQ products and you saw how we used to do our mounts, um, when the new HESIC Pandar sensor came out, the new XT, the X2, we started looking at things. How can we make our data better? We're always trying to push it and make it better. How do you make it better? Why is our, you know, because other manufacturers integrate that sensor like we do. Why is ours better? We started using these vibration mounts. So we look at vibration when they fly stuff and this, these little um, vibration dampeners help with the accuracy. You know, it really makes a big difference, right? Right there on the sensor than it does on the ground. So if you can take some vibration out where the sensor is, it really helps you with accuracy. So we've gone from five centimeters down. We got that as well. And you can see the triple cams, you know, in there like that. So all this right here, you got three 20 megapack. We got one nadir and two left and right. So we cover 120 degrees. This is, I told you about the beams. I, I don't know, many of you are familiar with the HR, great sensor. That's a sensor we used in Texas to do 1,800 acres in three days. Okay, look at the difference in the pattern. The new, that's the new payload, the new after sensor. So a lot, of, a lot more tree, a lot more points on the ground. It's really heavy canopy right here. So we did some testing. I want to know what it looked like. Wish you could see it better. The lights kind of hide some of that, but that's kind of what, that's kind of what it did. So both sensors work good, but you know, when you got 128, I'm sorry, you can't. And what the other one's got 32, it's not going, it's hard to compete, right, with all that. This is on a building, this is actually our office, which really says something to me, you know, building edges are very, very difficult. Fish release on a new compliant begins now, this month, and there's the pricing, 115 for an online version. Online, offline, does that make sense? Any questions about that? Online, offline, you know, we, we go with the POS pack to do some directory stuff, and some of them you can't get on the internet. We have, gov we have DOD clients that can't get on the internet when they process, so we have a special version for them. We have some special things that we change a little bit in there, but they're both NDA compliant. It is compact, and I got the thing, and I'm gonna talk about real-time terrain following. There's, you, that's not the only thing you can rely on. On the real-time terrain follow, you can use you know, a standard DIM or something and bring that in if you need to. Um, depending on your terrain, a lot of terrain, you know, people in the south, a lot of them don't have any, anything to worry about. But sometimes in t Texas, excuse me, Tennessee, North Carolina, there's some, there's some problems and you might need it. But you can pull in a dim if you don't want to use that or turn it off because it will not work over water. So, you know, I know you're not light iron over water, but you could have, there could be out in the woods, you could have a lake or something that you don't know about. So, and the drone will stop. It's not like it's going to crash. It doesn't. It just stops and says something's going on here. So, you can turn it off and continue if you want to. But, um, the empty cockpit software, a lot of our customers, as I mentioned before, really like that software because it's simple to use and they go with, they want to, uh, uh, you know, they're a large organization and they want to have uh, spread out across their fleet. Everybody can fly the same thing all the time. You don't have to worry about it. It just makes it easy. Batteries are the same, controllers are the same, software the same. You can send information back and forth. Um, it just makes it simple and it's easy to carry around as well because the case is so small. This is the non-NDA, it's got a couple more things on it. Some of this stuff has not been turned on. The forward-looking sensor's not been turned on on these yet, um, on the, on the um, easy one. But real-time terrain follow, all the other stuff's there, payload connect. There's some numbers on, you know, if you want to convert that to, I don't care, pans, I do both. I do metric all the time, but we, call, we say 40, 40 minute maximum flight time. Well, I flew 38 the other day with constant, not constant, but almost constant elevation change and it was fine which is nuts, because really 30 minutes is pretty much of a standard on small drones, unless you go into some of the watch prisms and stuff like that that fly for you know an hour and a half, or Harris, or something like that. But for a small drone, it's a long, it flies a long time. I was, I was surprised that it did what it did the other day, so. UHR Plus, lots of returns. Notice it is the M2X, so it is, is the new sensor, and I'll have some specs in a minute, and you'll see that the difference is uh, um, about a half a kilo, I think, something like that. Yeah, kilogram. Yeah, it is. It's 5.2. Notice it's 5.2. Um, accuracy, typically three centimeters, which is crazy on, on these mid-range sensors to have that kind of accuracy now that it does. It's got one RGB. It's a 26 megapixel. And we use that Planix APX15. The UHR, it's just the, it's the old HESI Pandar. Still great sensors. We have sold tons and tons of these. It's a great, still a great sensor. It's just, you know, everybody's trying to make new stuff. So people like, in a pound in a, in a sensor, that's a big deal. That's a lot of flying time. 
when they weigh as little as they do. So anyway, you notice this is 5.6 kilograms. So you're talking about a pound, roughly a pound. Um, it's a little bit lighter. So four, four centimeter RMSC2. Still, you know, most of the guys that are using these for us or customers, are, they want to go generate one foot contours. You know, that's way more accurate. You know, if you're three tenths, that's ASPRS standards. So this is way less than that. So um, a little bit of the flight time. Um, flight time, overlap. I know this is a difficult chart to read. Or it may not be, it is for me. Um, a lot of stuff. We usually fly at five uh, meters a second. I don't know what you guys do, but that's kind of a deal for me. I've flown fast. We've flown up to 10. Um, what I tell people, I says, look, I says, I don't care if it's three meters a second, four meters a second, or five meters a second. I'm 80% faster than a guy out there. And, the, and, and my drone does not need a truck, and he does not need health insurance or vacation. He's ready to go. So, you know, cause, and y'all know, I mean, I, I work with them. I've been working with somebody for 12 years. I mean, I like the guys. They're, they're great guys to work with. But they're hard to get people to go outside and work right now. It just is. It's just difficult. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I work with hundreds of survey companies across the southeast. I manage the eastern side of the country for GOQ and um, all the guys that I've been working with for 12 years in the southeast. But now I go up the, up the coast. But um, it's just difficult. And, you know, and it's nice to be able to say, hey, i got to get this. The money's out there. You, want, you don't want to lose the job because you can't do it in a timely manner that the customer wants. And you can, you know, get a couple of drones and stick them out there somewhere and strategically and be able to do that and make the money and, you know, reap the benefits of being able to have this. Because really, when I look at it and our company looks at this, we're, there's about, in my opinion, 5% market penetration with this. I, in, in 2020, I called 150 man engineering firms and 95% of them did not utilize this technology. Why is that? And I'll tell you why, because I talked to all of them, the survey managers, and there was a, the, the, the main reasons they did not was I bought something, most, most of it was photogrammet, photogrammetry, and they did not get training on it, or did get training on it, but could not use it effectively because of bad training, right? Because, I, hey, I've done more photogrammetry than I'll ever do with LiDAR, ever. I've trained over 500 people to do photogrammetry projects. I've sold a lot of these systems. So anyway, so they just didn't have it, so they don't believe it. So that's why there's not, there's not really good market penetration. So if you do, in fact, get in this business, you'll, you'll find that it's very effective and you're one of the only guys out there who's got it because there's not a lot of people that have it. There's, even in the southeast, it's just crazy. But you can do easily you know, do a couple hundred acres on a battery, you know, flying it unless it's weird, it's windy, you know, a lot of terrain relief where you haven't used a lot of battery, maybe not. Or maybe it's super thick that you don't want to. And what I tell people, I said, look, I don't care really about that 200. What I care about is I'm so much faster than a human being. Um, I'll get whatever I get, and I don't know what's out there, and I don't want to go out there. So maybe I fly at three meters a second instead of five because I, I think it's super thick out there. So this is our U.S. Air Light. It's you know it's only 16, 16 channels, so less points to the ground. All is 100,000 or 200,000. That's what we're talking about. But it makes a big difference depending on where you work or depending on the canopy. Sometimes it's not a big deal, and we have so many people using this. Um, they like it and they can always, you know, they can upgrade to the other one if they want to. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. And if you've got any current customers that are in here, thanks. Thank you very much for watching this presentation on the Easy One Drone LiDAR systems from Microdrones. If you have any questions, please email mason.styles at microdrones.com and we'll get in touch with you right away. You can also schedule a meeting at your convenience with one of our helpful representatives from our website, microdrones.com. Simply schedule a meeting today. Thank you, and we look forward to the opportunity to work with you.